Sindiwe Magona is one of South Africa's most respected writers and poets. But by the age of 23, she describes herself as having been a has-been. After a promising start as a teacher, she lost her job and was then left by her husband with three young children to feed. I've been through a lot in my life, some of it really hard, but I don't think I ever felt quite as desolate as the, as the day I came to this bridge. It was not a well thought out plan, but I think this is the nearest I ever came to committing suicide. My mom had gone to the Eastern Cape to look after her dying father. And I was left with my siblings, my three kids, and my mom had left some money and food, of course. But after a while, everything just ran out. In the end, I don't know what came into my mind. I just prepared a meal that wasn't there. I lit the primer stove and put a pot on the primer stove and switched, you know, pumped it hard. I went through all the motions, putting pepper and salt in, and there was nothing in that pot, absolutely nothing except water. But it was a way of making the kids not bother me and making them feel they had to wait for something. And, um, and they fell asleep. There was nothing, nothing. I was the hope of the family. I was the one who got an education. I had the teacher's diploma and my two parents, who if you add all the years they were in school, you don't need all the fingers on your hands. They had always fed us. And there I was in my 20s. And what I had done in six years after leaving school, I had three kids and nothing else. I never forgot that sense of utter failure, that sense of just being a husband. Your life is over and you're only 23. What was your mind saying as you stood here looking down at the trains? If you jump, you don't, you don't have to, you won't feel the pain. It will be the end of the pain. And when you were on that bridge, and looking down at those trains, something stopped you, turned you around. What happened? You know, I think it's, 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 it's what is often called a moment of grace. When something, just a thought suddenly comes to you, we believe that's when your ancestors whisper to you. When the voice of the God within you is more, is, is the strongest. It, 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 it's a flesh in the mind. Don't do this. Your children need you. When she took that leap of faith, I'm sure she had a vision of us all through, through her eyes. How can she leave us? Her three children, my mother, and us, her siblings. Because we're all dependent on her. She knew that. If she was going to leave my mother with us only, then we wouldn't be here now. We wouldn't be sitting here now. She chose life so that we can all have life. This bridge changed me. Standing here changed me. And I decided I could undo the, the harm, the damage. If I lived and worked through the problems, and mended myself, mended my life, put it together again. And lived the dream I had had growing up of being somebody, of being something, of helping my parents and my, my children. How do you feel now, age 69? Thank God. Thank God I chose to live. Yes, thank God. On my way back, 
I remembered something my father said to me when we were children, that God's house is always open. I hadn't been to church for a long time. I went in there, just sat. And then eventually I fell on my knees. I just fell on my knees and asked God for strength and guidance. And I knew, even as I left that church, that God was with me. God had not abandoned me. I had abandoned God. As Africans, we, we believe, and I was raised that way, that we are never alone. There are the ancestors surrounding you. And whether one believes in ancestors or not, the idea that you are the outcome of all that has happened before you, because your parents, they carry in the memory that is in the blood, we carry that ancestry with us. And therefore what we do, we do on their behalf too, because they live through us. The only way out of the quagmire in which I had put myself was to find myself. I needed to go back to teaching and I needed to find a way to go back to being a, a, a school teacher again. But you made a sacrifice. What was it? I was studying, I was mothering, I was working full time. And I realized that I, I could not cope with the two of them, the younger ones. So what did you do? I wrote to a woman I had never met, their paternal grandmother, and asked her if she would mind looking after her grandchildren. What I admire with her, because if, perhaps, if it was me, I would have said they won't even get my children because, you know, we are divorced and he didn't, uh, support the children but you know she was beyond that you know, beyond that uh, she, she realized that if I bring up my children here uh, they will be better children it was a huge step to send your children to your mother-in-law you had to trust so much in that well it was not what I had planned but given my circumstance at that I knew this was something I had to do by child minding being taken away from me, I was now free to study and I pursued my studies with gusto.